So what we're dealing with today is finding out there's been a second night of violence after um, uh, Hamas or uh, Israeli forces delivered airstrikes on Hamas targets. And um, but President Trump signing this proclamation saying Israel has a sovereign right to the Golan Heights. So there are all these issues all the time with Israel and who gets what, as we know. We are so pleased to have Barry Nussbaum of the American Truth Project uh, with us to talk about some of the events happening this week. And I know from what he's told me, he has been on the phone with some of his sources in Israel today, and they are very fearful that, that war is close. And they told him a few other things. Barry, welcome back to America Trends. Thanks, Amy. So good to be with you, especially in this very important time as news is literally breaking while we are on the air. Yeah. What did you find out, Barry? Uh, there's a tremendous amount of armored car, uh, armored corps personnel, I should say, at the border of Gaza right now, amassed at the southern tip of Israel, both armored personnel carriers and tank corps, uh, preparing to cross the border if necessary. Uh, I think... Um, Prime Minister Netanyahu, who also holds the defense uh, portfolio as defense minister, has finally reached the end of his rope. Quite frankly, I'm amazed that he had this much patience. Uh, Israel has crossed the border from the air in the last 48 hours, using mostly helicopters and some jets as well to bomb infrastructure on the Gaza side. But um, to my great consternation, Israel is the only country in the history of the world that calls up the building they are about to bomb and says, you have five minutes, get everybody out. We don't want anybody hurt. And Wait, then they can you proceed. Just say that again? It, it really is unheard of. It, it's in the history of warfare, both modern and ancient, Amy, there's never been a civilization at war who calls up the enemy and says, quick, evacuate we're gonna blow up your headquarters, or we're gonna blow up your communication center, or we're gonna blow up the office of the head of um, the intelligence service in Gaza. And so what happens is these people get the phone call on their cell phones, they run away, they usually hide in the hospital or in the nearby schools, the building gets blown up and it doesn't deter anything. Can you imagine in World War II, if any country participating called the other side and said, Run away, we're gonna blow up your headquarters, we're gonna blow up your factories, but we don't want anybody hurt. I don't think it would have dissuaded more violence. And what Israel is finding after months and months of kite bombs crossing the border, of fire bombs, of mortar shells, of long range and medium range rockets flying out of Gaza, and the latest one flew, get this, north of Tel Aviv, hit a house with seven people in it, all of whom were injured, and thank God nobody was killed. It's a tremendous escalation, and what Israel does in response is gets on the phone, says, get out of the buildings, we're going to retaliate, and then they blow up empty buildings. Literally, that's how Israel responds. And to no one's great surprise, <laughs> it doesn't defer more violence. Talking to Barry Nussbaum of the American Truth Project. That's the americantruthproject.org. And Barry, um, so we've had two nights of violence and, and the people you're talking to there. This could go on for days and days, perhaps weeks. Is that what you're hearing on the ground? Well, there's the additional um, impetus by the present government of Israel to be more strong and forceful in their response because it's election season. And Southern Israel is infuriated with their own government for being nice. In other words, to tell the residents of Southern Israel, we'll just live in a bomb shelter and hope you don't get killed from the next, next missile instead of going out and wiping out the people that are sending the missiles over the fences. I was just there last year, and the proximity from Gaza to the surrounding communities in Israel is, well, like a three wood. It's really close. And what happens is, if you've got three to four seconds to get in a bomb shelter before your house blows up, chances are, if it's a direct hit, you're not going to make it. The Israelis in the south of Israel are fed up. They're urging their government to do something about it, and something about it doesn't include blowing up empty buildings. That's why, for the first time in many years, there is a mass of armor at the fence right now. And we know some people in some of those units that are waiting to get the order to cross the border or not. Stand by. It could come at any moment. 
or it might be called off entirely. We just don't know. Well, yeah, because if I recall, what, over the weekend, wasn't there a ceasefire going on? Well, what happens is um, Hamas always starts it with missiles. They blow up a house, kill some people, start fields on fire, uh, infiltrate through tunnels. Israel strikes back, and then Hamas does what they always do. After a few buildings are blown up, they contact the Egyptians who say, cease fire, cease fire, cease fire. Israel stopped attacking. Within hours, another 50 or 60 missiles were launched, and so Israel bombed more buildings. As of right now, as we speak tonight, it's quiet. Hmm. Whether it will be tomorrow, I don't know. There's a lot of troops at the border right now, Amy. The next missile, I think, is going to cause an invasion.